Okay, let's get stuck in this video. So I'll just show you uh, what I'll be uh, doing this clip here. It's a program called Media Watch. Now these guys are meant to be impartial. They're from the ABC and they're meant to uh, you know, debunk uh, lies and so forth that the media portray. But as you'll see in this clip, uh, they're actually uh, perpetuating the lies that the media are <laughs> portraying. So um, what I want to show you is um, our ABC in Australia isn't very uh, impartial. They're meant to be impartial, but they're not impartial. So I'll just show you here on uh, Safari here. Uh, Left-wing bias proves it's clearly their ABC because the slogan of the ABC is it's your ABC because we actually pay for it. <laughs> I think it was eight cents a day every Australian pays for it. That was many years ago. They used to have the ad. And um, so the, the charter is they're meant to be impartial, but they're not. They're very, they're very left bias now. Um, and I also looked on the media bias fact check, and they're saying that uh, the ABC is uh, left of centre. Uh, these media sources are slightly to moderate liberal bias. Now I like to call call liberals left because we've got a liberal party here in Australia, and they're actually a little bit on the right. So. <laughs> I tend to call it left and right. So yeah, they're they're left they're left biased. You you'll see you'll see their bias coming out because we've got a, a sort of you know moderate right wing government here in Australia at the moment, and the media just like with Donald Trump they are trying to bash him. It's every every turn they're, they're looking to uh, try and get rid of the government. So let's have a look. There we go. We'll get to that in a minute. Get back to the clip. Okay. So let's play the clip and I'll pull it to pieces because um, Paul Barry, this guy, I'll, I'll post on his Twitter page, he has got, well, I reckon he's either hasn't got a clue or he's up to something. But now to the latest lockdown in Victoria, where many are now blaming the federal government for its efforts on quarantine and frustration over the vaccine rollout is boiling over. And last week, Health Minister Greg Hunt became a punching bag for journalists, channelling community anger. There we go. You see, you see it's set up there that he's, he's totally against the health minister. Now, yeah, Victoria's in uh, lockdown again. Uh, they're getting some cases and uh, yeah, you know, at least two weeks to a month maybe lockdown now. Uh, it's full lockdown. And you, only need, you, know, you can only go out for essential uh, business and you know, shopping and, and also uh, a little bit of exercise and that's about it. 500,000 Australians who are fully vaccinated out of a population of 26 million. The US announced this week that they have got 50% of their population completely done. So there we go. So this is this is this is a whole basis. They're saying only 500,000 out of 26 million are vaccinated. It's only around 2%. Oh, gee, we're doing so bad. It's only 2%. But we'll dig we'll dig into that. Why why is it only 2%? So I'll just play this for a second. I'll, I'll get into the facts. Australia's performance is underwhelming on any measure. Well, with great respect, um, today was a record day of 111,000 Australians who stepped forward to be vaccinated. That's a good point, good point. Yeah, the, the rollout was a bit slow and I'll get to the reasons. Well, actually, we'll get to the reasons now so then you'll be able to see uh, when it's keep pushing this narrative, what's wrong with the narrative. So 500,000, that, that is correct. That's fully vaccinated, right? Fully vaccinated. And as you know, uh, the vaccine that we're using, AstraZeneca, has uh, two uh, doses. So I'll grab the... Uh, this is from the uh, health site. So this is from the Australian government uh, about the AstraZeneca vaccine. And you'll see here... Uh, where are we? Do, 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 do. Receiving risks of the vaccine, etc., etc. Where is the sit here? Basically, it's 12 weeks apart. But I just want to show you so we know. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I had it there and I just scrolled up, didn't I? The, the 12, you've got to take them 12 weeks apart, right? So my point is, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how the, the Australian uh, rollout happened. So basically, I think it was, uh, actually, we'll just search here. I'm pretty sure the Prime Minister got his vaccine about 21st of February. Uh, so we'll just put first COVID-19 um, person vaccinated Australia. Uh, uh, let's see, where are we? Da -da -da -da. Um, Australia's, yeah, 21st of February, Jane 
Malasiek becomes the first patient, uh, first recipient of the coronavirus vaccine. That was on February 21st. So you're thinking 12 weeks. So she would have got um, she would have got the AstraZeneca. I'm pretty sure. Uh, does it say here? Did the coronavirus doesn't say. Pretty sure they're doing the AstraZeneca. So basically, we got the AstraZeneca vaccine, and uh, hang on, sitting on the side after the first dose of Pfizer. Okay, so she got the Pfizer. A lot of the first vaccines were Pfizer, and I think they're 21 days apart. So all this 2%, that's pretty much going to be all the Pfizer vaccine, right? And there was there wasn't a there wasn't a big supply of that because because so let's keep let's keep in mind 21st of February. And um, so anyone that got to AstraZeneca real early, we're only in February, March, April, May, 21st of May. This was done, uh, I was talking about this like three days ago on the 28th of May. So unless you, got, <laughs> unless you got in the first week, unless you got in the first week, which didn't happen, I think the AstraZeneca was way after the 21st of February. I might look up, because basically they were rolling out to the health workers first, because, you know, the nursing homes are vulnerable, older Australians first. So yet. And now we're getting the Pfizer one, but the AstraZeneca was coming coming afterwards. So we'll put um, first AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca vaccine dose. Jeez, uh, I'm typing too fast. Australia. So I'm just trying to find out. Just getting this timeline correct for you guys. Um, did they have one? Did they say? It was it was weeks afterwards. So here we go. So you got here. I'll just uh, I'll zoom in on this so you can have a look. Uh, here we go. Uh, where was it? Just saw it just then. Here we go. Australian regulators regulatory recommends a twelve week gap between the AstraZeneca doses. You see, right? And also they were, the government was saying rightly so to get your get your flu jab first, and then they say to wait two weeks after. So see, see how it's pushing it's pushing the timeline. Of, Timeline forward, you see, or timeline back. So um, yeah, so I got my uh, I got my flu dose on the first of May, and I was going to get my uh, COVID mid May, but I uh, had a bit of gastro, so I was feeling a bit sick. I had a whole week off, sort of thing. Didn't do any YouTube, and uh, yeah, so I'm getting it this week, my COVID. Right, so. Let's get on to this. There we go. So that's the AstraZeneca. 12 weeks. So keep that in mind. It's 12 weeks and 21 days for... Uh, so 12 weeks is 12, 7, 84 days versus 21 days for the Pfizer. And a lot of the countries that have got high vaccination rates are using the Pfizer. And this is where the problem problem occurs, you see. That's why the media are, on, are trying to get onto the government saying, no, oh, you know... We, you know, we should have been further ahead, but the thing is with the Pfizer, we had to uh, keep it under minus 70 degrees Celsius, and there's not there's not many super freezers around, you know. So we went we went down the AstraZeneca route, which is quite quite prudent, and also we can um, for two reasons. First, you know, it doesn't need to be that cold, and also uh, we can we can manufacture it locally in Australia in CSL in Melbourne, right? So those are the two things, and they're gonna. Uh, within the next month or so, it'll be produced. I think actually, I think they're doing now. They can produce one million doses a week. So it's really it's just a beat up for the government, really. But let's 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 look into this a bit more. So half a minute. So that's that's why that's basically why uh, we're sort of a bit behind. All right. So that's a whole bit. That's a whole premise of the beat up. There isn't going to be. There isn't going to be a, a huge number fully vaccinated because you've got that 12-week gap. Plus, they recommended the flu vaccine as well, so it's, it's starting to push it, you see. Uh, 3.9 million, 3,906,000 Australians who've been vaccinated. So that's the true number, 4 million. That's not fully vaccinated, that's the first dose, you see. So they've rolled out 4 million already since February. That's not bad. That's not bad, given... And I'll show you another thing. We got blocked. We got blocked. Now this is this is very interesting too. So here we go. So this was in April. So February. So you think uh, that was just a month in? We had some Pfizer and we we're waiting for our AstraZeneca. And then it said, uh, let's see if I can just I might just move my little window here so you can see it better. So it says European Union denies claim it blocked shipment of 3.1 million 
as AstraZeneca doses, right? That was in April, but uh, I'll grab the next one. But on 9th of March, so we're, we're talking 21st of February, we got the first dose of Pfizer. We are waiting for the AstraZeneca. That was meant to come in real quick. And I'll just move my window again. So you can have a read. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. Oops. Uh, don't, here we go. So you, go, see, you can see the date there, 9th of March. So Tuesday the 9th of March here. Uh, it says that Italy's block on AstraZeneca vaccines prompts warning against vaccine protectionism from Australian government. So basically Italy Italy was blocking blocking the uh, vaccine getting to Australia because rightly so, they had, they had a, a big pandemic there, big outbreak. And most of the Australians, left and right wing, <laughs> were saying, oh, that's good, that's good. We can wait, we've got... Bugger all cases here in Australia. Let the Italians get it. Everything will be good. We'll get ours later, right? Mm. So you know, when it when it suits them, they'll they'll attack the government and <laughs> not realizing they actually were supporting them early on. So that was, that was the thing. We got bugger all doses coming through. How can you vaccinate people when you haven't got the doses, right? So it's just a, it's just a complete beat up. And I was so mad that Media Watch uh, did this. And I thought I'll. I'll get on and make a video and let's sort this sort this out and just present the facts. You can figure it out yourself. You're smart enough to know that uh, the media manipulates fake news. Fake news, man. All right, so let's get back to the clip. So it's just it's just more of the same, isn't it, really? Uh, Come on, Minister. Half a million in total. Let's go in here half the population. Half a million fully vaccinated. That's two doses of uh, the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca, right? I think there was, I think it was probably only about 100,000 doses of Pfizer, maybe. Don't quote me on that one. I didn't look it up. There, there wasn't that many Pfizer, and uh, that was for all the uh, healthcare workers, nursing home, that sort of thing, right? Like the no, US I, has, I, is it? Hunt's roasting on 7.30 was one of several hostile media interviews, including this one on Sunrise, where Natalie Barr was taking no prisoners. I'll also, I'll also point out the vaccine uh, is not compulsory. I, personally, I believe it should be compulsory if you're working around high-risk groups, such as, you know, cancer patients, um, you know, the elderly, you know, nursing homes, and that. It should, it should be compulsory. But even then, there's only, there's only like 70 or 80% of the nursing uh, staff are getting it because of the thing which is, wasn't the government's fault at all, uh, there was a, a rare side effect of blood clots and everyone in Australia is putting off getting the vaccine because they're afraid of the blood clots, which is around, uh, I believe, in your 40s and 50s. Uh, I mean, 50s, in your 50s, it's about one in 100,000 chance of getting a blood clot. And also, uh, excuse me, sorry. And um, in your 60s, it goes down to one in 200,000. And it's it's more under under 50, that's why... The under 50s are waiting for the for the Pfizer to come through in October, All right? And but everyone's waiting for the Pfizer. And it's just it's not good because we're getting some major variants happening, like the uh, Vietnamese variant, which is quite virulent, uh, spreads very easily. And also we've got the Indian variant. In <laughs> it's funny the Indians are saying don't call it the Indian variant. Well, they say call it BU17.312. You know, seriously, just call it the Bloomin' Indian variant. You know. We want to get the information out there. You know, don't don't worry about this stupid politics of. It's a bit like when they were calling it the China virus, and everyone said to call it COVID nineteen. But it's a bit easier to remember than B seventeen three one two whatever <laughs> variants called. They got they got all these technical names for the variants, but nobody's going to use them. They shouldn't use them. Just call it the Indian variant. It's a lot easier. You got the Brazilian variant, Indian variant, Vietnamese variant, UK variant, US variant, right? Uh, you notice the UK and the US don't complain about the variants. Uh, yeah, I think they should be worrying about getting their population vaccinated in India instead of worrying about the variants. All right. So, yeah, that, that's one of the major things, too, is uh, trying to blame on the government. A lot of it's uh, the people's fault, you yeah. But one of the reasons, Minister, they're saying uh, wait is because you and the Prime Minister told them that you so this is this is the narrative this is natalie barr uh, natalie barr loves attacking men uh, i'll put a link up over there when she attacked mike tyson it's one of my uh, most viewed videos uh, channel 7 tried to take it down uh, they failed because i was doing commentary on it 
uh, they they basically just didn't were probably maybe embarrassed that Natalie did the interview. So so Natalie's going to go on now about ah oh, the government said uh, it's not a rush, it's not a rush. Said there's no rush for weeks and weeks and weeks. See Greg Hunt, he's a little bit smart. I'll pull Greg up on this. Personally, he didn't say that. He didn't say there was a rush, but the Prime Minister did. So technically, he's right. He didn't say it. But I think Natalie Barr, when she's saying, you said, she's referring to the government, not him personally. But, you know, there's a little bit of sneakiness there with Greg. I'm going to pull him up as well. You said That's there's false. no rush. We talked about it on this program. That's false. And yeah. it, it's not false. So obviously, he didn't. Go and go and be interviewed by Natalie and and specifically talked about it. But the government's been saying that, yes. False. We, you you said it on our program no, many times. No, that's not something I have ever said. And in fact, Greg Hunt has not quite said that, but he came pretty close in this March press conference. There you go. So it's a marathon, not a sprint. This is a, a marathon, not a sprint. So look at the dates there. 18th of March. Right. So keep this in context. Let's go back to the Safari browser. This was 9th of March. 9th of March, we got news that uh, Italy had blocked our shipment, right? And it was for good reason. I don't mind Italy blocking the shipment. We had no cases, right? We were pretty much cruising along, right? So it's always wise to give the vaccine to countries that are having big outbreaks because um, not only does it save lives overseas, but it also stops the more the more the virus is spreading in the community, the more chance there is of uh, mutations and variants and getting you know dangerous variants happening. So you are actually better uh, administering the doses. To, I, I I personally think you know just the world should help out and flood India with the vaccine and get that really under control at the moment because that's you know there should be like an emergency task force. You know to just. Get it, get it, get everything going. Uh, India needs oxygen, needs vaccines, and that's just putting that in context. Nine days afterwards, that's why the uh, the uh, government was talking about it's not a ra it's not a uh, race, it's a marathon, because they, they knew things were going to happen. You know, things happen, man. It's a dynamic situation, All right? So let's get back to the clip here. So that's interesting. He's got total doses. This was back in March, 226,000. So we're up to 4 million now. So yeah, it, it got rolling pretty quick. From 21st of February to 9th of March, we already had 226,000 doses administered. And as Sunrise showed, the Prime Minister has been telling us to hold the horses on multiple occasions. It's not so that's 28th of May. Sorry, I've got my... Uh, click on this again, sorry. 28th of May, as you can see. Maybe I should put my window over this side. I think they're going to come up with dates on that side all the time. <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be looking out of the window, that's all. All right. It's not a race. It's not a competition. It's not a race. You've got to get it right, and it's got to be safe. It's not a race. That's right. It's got to be safe. You've got to get it right. And one of, one of the things that Australians also were thinking about is, you know, <laughs> I know you, you guys overseas probably don't want to hear this, but we were sort of saying, yeah, let the guinea pigs, let the UK and that, you know, they can sort out, see if there's any real world side effects, and we'll just sit back and we'll get our vaccination later. We haven't got many cases. We're good at uh, we're good at stopping the spread here in Australia, you know? Race, it's not a competition. There you go. That's what we were talking about. And with only half a million Australians fully vaccinated, it's... Fully vaccinated. Yeah, it's Paul Barry, you're smart, man. Yeah, you fully vaccinated. That means two doses, you see. Most of these, uh, besides the Johnson Johnson, I believe, um, that's the only one I know of that you only need one one dose. You need two doses. Uh, 21 days between doses for the uh, Pfizer. Um, not too sure about Moderna. I think that's around 21. But AstraZeneca uh, is the uh, outlier, and they recommend you know, three months. Three months between doses. So do the mass. 21st of February, February, March, April, May, 21st of May. It wasn't going to happen. You were never going to have two doses. That's why there's only, there's only 500,000 people uh, fully vaccinated out of the 26 million. But there's 4 million that have had at least one dose. Right? So keep that in mind. So they, they, they put us on the rank. We're like the 100th, 100th in the world because we're only 2.1%. Whereas we should be, we're up around 20%, which is, which is, we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well considering uh, we've had less than a thousand deaths uh, in, you know, over a year from COVID. And, 
yeah, we've, we've, I reckon the government's done pretty well, really. No surprise, the media are looking for someone to blame. Blame. Especially in regard to... Blame the media. <laughs> blame the people that are hesitant to get the vaccine. Blame the media. You know, don't blame the government. Aged care homes where some high-risk patients still have not been given the jab. Well, so, because it's not compulsory, man. A lot of the old people are really stuck in their ways. They don't, they'll just say, no, I don't want it. Don't want it, you know. Uh, it's not compulsory. It's not, you know, you can't control people. This, you know, this isn't China, man. On 7.30, Lee Sales asked... Whose head's going to roll for that, yours or the aged care minister, Richard Colbeck? Well, with great, uh, with great respect, uh, we have 98% uh, of uh, facilities around Australia in a program that is uh, protecting Australians. And as the questions got tougher, Hunt's with great respect line kept on coming. I would respectfully um, make... Well, what's the point? Big deal. Big deal for you says great respect or whatever. What's that got to do with slice of, slice of bread? You know, you just... Uh, just stick the to point. facts. No, with, with great respect. Well, with great respect. And next morning there was That's more respect for Inquisitors on Sunrise and today. From the outside... Notice, notice there too. They've, they're both of... All the media in Australia is left, left bias, really. Uh, there is no right right biased media in Australia except like free to air. I'm talking free to air. You have to go to cable uh, to like you know you can probably get Fox News here. Uh, Sky's right biased a bit, but uh, all our media is totally left biased. Every single channel two, seven, nine, ten, SBS, all uh, left biased. And you see they're, they're pushing that thing. Only five hundred thousand Australians are fully vaccinated. Yeah, I agree, but that's not the full story. That's not the full story. And it's because of the nature of the vaccine, it's only 500,000 are fully vaccinated. Perspective from anyone's perspective, really, um, it's not good enough. Well, with, with great respect. And was it returned? On ABC's AM, Mr Hunt got very little respect from Sabra Lane, who interrupted the minister repeatedly in her search for answers. Since and the point that of that question, sorry, Minister, we've got a lot to get through in limited time. Sorry, Minister, million you can keep talking... Yeah, 1.7 million lives lost this year, <laughs> he's saying. About the, com the, the numbers around the world, there are specifics we'd like to get to. to you've made those way, points. Sorry, Minister, you've made those points. So, basically, the Health Minister rightly so is saying, look, there's, we've, got a, we've got a big outbreak worldwide and we're doing really well in Australia. We should be uh, prioritising the vaccine to countries that, that are having trouble controlling this because... As I said previously, uh, not only does it save lives, it also will save our lives because there'll be uh, less deadly variants, uh, being mutations. The more, the more you vaccinate, the, the less likely you're going to have mutations. Points already, sorry. And that is not the question. How many are still yet to get their vaccine? As frustration grows, Mr Hunt will need a better answer than with respect. And on Sunrise, Matthew Doran offered up the perfect but unlikely solution. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so going back to this, this is... Uh, Matthew Doran and Natalie Barr, uh, they, were, they were the tag team on the uh, Mike Tyson interview. Totally recommend it. Up there is the link. Go have a look. It's, uh, it's cringeworthy. For goodness sake, just admit that the vaccine rollout isn't going all that well. We'll speed it up and get on with it. Well, there's no point speeding up, mate, if people are hesitant to get the vaccine. That's one of the major uh, stumbling blocks at the moment. Uh, we'll just leave it there. Uh, where are we? Politicians, please take note. Yeah, whatever. So that's basically uh, the crux of the matter at the moment is people are hesitant to get the AstraZeneca because a very it's a very rare blood clot. I uh, believe the um, uh, in the general population having this very rare blood clot is about four in a million, four in a million, and make sure is it less than that? Yeah. Because there's yeah, it's five five per million five per million chance that you'll get it uh, from the vaccine. Um, I think it's four per no, I reckon it's less. It's about it's about ten times. It's about four four or five per ten million, say. So it's very rare, and yeah, it is riskier. But uh, you now, if the if the government the government was rightly came out and said you know there's a risk, well, you know it's it's uh, their duty of care. They've got to tell you about the risks. But um, then the media just went on on about it and on and on and on about it that uh, we're administering a risky vaccine, which is not. So uh, it's the media's fault. And then the public didn't really do the math in their heads and uh, thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not getting it. And 
and because we haven't got many cases here, uh, people are sort of weighing up the risk now. <laughs> the, the funny thing, well, not funny, the ironic thing is, now that they've got an outbreak in Victoria, they're complaining to the government again. Again, they're complaining to the government. It's like, oh, oh, now there's a big rush for the vaccine. Oh, I can't get my vaccine. It's like, well, where were you the last few months? You could have got the vaccine, but you were complacent because of the AstraZeneca risk. It's like very, very rare. Uh, uh, was it TT of thrombosis risk uh, blood clot? So there we go. That's the full story. Um, there you go, guys. Hope you like that. Um, if there's anything I missed out or any misinformation, feel free to comment below. Uh, unlike these clowns at Media Watch that we have here, and like this clown, Paul Barry, um, he, I've, I've commented on his Twitter page before. He doesn't answer. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's just a little smug bugger. He's uh, pushing his narrative of trying to bring down the government, which I think is doing a pretty good job of this, uh, of protecting us from COVID. And um, by keeping the international borders fairly tightly shut, and they're getting huge backlash from that, getting all the sob stories from India, oh, you know. But it's like, well, don't don't travel. <laughs> Everyone's got relatives overseas. We're not travelling there. You know, the Indians are travelling to weddings, funerals, going visiting their family, you know, and then wondering... Why are they getting locked out of Australia when there's an outbreak? Because it's, it's a quarantine. It's got nothing to do with citizenship or racism or anything. It's, quar it's a quarantine issue. It's National's, National's uh, Biological Security, Biosecurity Act that they put through, I think it was 2015. All right, guys. So um, it's probably run long enough. I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.